Hey guys, welcome to System Design Fight Club. We are now going to go over my predictions for chapter five of Alex Shu's upcoming machine learning system design book. This chapter is on harmful content detection. Since I've only got the list of chapter titles, um, I'm predicting that it'll be they provide an image and then you just re uh, return a result of whether the image is harmful or not, um, or possibly like categorical tags. Uh, for like why. Um, uh, we'll we'll kind of like ex uh, generalize it or abstract it to um, handle uh, multiple different categorical tags for like why it's harmful harmful and in, in um, like a, a second half of this video. Um, so let's start off uh, data model. Uh, so we got an image and you're going to figure out, is it harmful or not? So it has to pick up on whether there's something in the image that it's not going to like. Um, so uh, I'm feeling a convolutional uh, neural network. It's just going to be a regular old, uh, it's just a straight up classifier. Um, nothing fancy like collaborative filtering or anything like that. It's just a plain old classifier. It's a fancy one, a special type of classifier, a convolutional neural network, of course, which requires a lot of training and is rather hard to do. I imagine they're gonna talk about it a lot, but um, I think that's all I really need to know is, hey, it's gonna be a convolutional neural network. That's all I care about for the prediction. Um, yeah, okay. I guess we can go ahead and jump into the diagram. Um, okay, so we're gonna have this, um, this client and, uh, they're gonna have this like image request and you're gonna have this, uh, image processing service. Image processing service. And you are literally going to pass an image file. I'm gonna assume that the image is not, um, so big that you might want to do a multi-part upload or stick it on an S3 bucket or something. I'm going to assume it goes over the over the network just fine. Um, and it, it you, you are going to need to have it directly on the image processing service. And um, the data model is going to be hosted directly on the service again this time. Um, anyways, uh, you're going to provide an image and you're going to get back a classification, a, a output of harmful or not harmful. Um, so you provide an image file, just like a regular old uh, image, no uh, image ID or anything like that. Um, and then we're going to have a, uh, a result of um, harmful or um, not harmful, just the output. And uh, yeah, well, so you're gonna to need to train the model. Uh, since it's a classifier, you have to have um, some labeled uh, training data. Um, they might go into how to get the training data, but um, you're gonna to need to have some kind of training data, uh, probably be in like a uh, data warehouse or something like that. You don't wanna have it like directly in prod. You don't wanna hit OLTP and do these huge pulls straight off of uh, your, your your prod databases that are, that are doing uh, online transaction processing. Um, you're gonna have these uh, these uh, model training workers um, that are gonna do a lot of processing. Um, that could actually be an interesting problem is, um, you know, what if the model training worker crashes like midway through training it? It can literally take days on end to train these models. You could probably, you might want to do like checkpointing or something. Um, I, I, I think with, so neural networks have these things called epochs. And so that would allow you for, to do um, like checkpointing is that at the end of every um, epoch. Um, let's go ahead and write that down. Checkpoints at the end of every, um, epoch um, in case the worker crashes. Okay. It's going to be training a classification model. Um, you're going to pull the training data into this thing, and we're going to get a 
model object out. You don't want to stick it directly into prod right away. Uh, usually you're going to do some kind of um, A-B testing and stuff. You're going to want to like control the versioning of your uh, data models as you're rolling them out in case there is an issue in prod, like you, you um, had a, it like looked good when you're training it and you were testing it out before deployment. And when you deploy it, suddenly it's uh, causing some huge issues. That's what you want to have so we can roll back to. Um, so you have this model that you've trained. Um, we can go ahead and have maybe some checkpointing. Um, just have this like checkpointing data store. You could maybe even share it with the model store somehow. Um, I don't know. You even have something that is maintaining the status of these training jobs. Um, I feel like they're not really going to get too deep into that though. Um, so this is a thing that you can use for recovering when you crash. Of course, going to need to have um, deployments. You know, like if it's a, it's it's similar to a regular old service deployment, but now you're going to be slapping this model onto it. The model might be stored in a pickle file or something. Um, run a deployment. Uh, so it could be something like a Jenkins job just whatever you're using for deploying your service. But now what's special about it with that data model is that it has to pull from the model store um, and it's going to deploy that with the jar file or whatever that you're using for uh, uh, executing the um, service, whatever it is, whatever executable file it is, this is going to get deployed with your executable file and you're going to have it like right there. So it's going to be, horizontally scaled out, and then each machine that's running the service is going to have a copy of that uh, data model that you've trained. Okay. What else did I want? Um, oh, that's right. I always wanted to have the input and output, and I also want to have a record of the outputs that it has given out. So let's do the data model first, though, um, just because I like to be so explicit with that. I've had some sources online that are not explicit with this, and they're really ambiguous and hand wavy with it. I really don't like that. Um, so it is an actual image, unlike some of the other problems, which is like an image ID or it's like the, the feature values that you've you've done PCA on to obtain and you put that in, it is the actual image that you stick into it. And then you get out a classification. Um, so it's classification of something like uh, harmful slash not harmful. And we can do something a little bit more sophisticated here uh, if we do uh, the multiple different classification levels. And I'll, I'll, I'll circle back to that later on in the video. Um, so we have that. And um, I also wanted to, so you can do like A-B testing on this, like I said. And so you might want to log your classifications that you're doing. Um, so you might be passing image files that have um, some kind of image ID um that you'd recognize and you'd be like oh i know how that one is supposed to be um although if it's on prod i don't really know why you would keep running images that you've already classified before there could be some kind of data issue in that you've you've seen uh the, the clients are complaining about getting incorrect classifications so it could be helpful there um and then so we're just going to record for the image id for each image id that we handle we're going to record it over here so let's talk about the schema. I'm going to um, record that image. Let's say it's just something simple like 3470. Um, we could do a UUID. Let's actually maybe do image UUID. Actually, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, ABC dash 347 dash, uh, let's say ABC, ABC. There you go. And we're going to store the output. 
that we have, so let's say this one was harmful. So perhaps it plays a role in a greater system of um, preventing uh, un, um, politically incorrect or otherwise um, bad content from getting displayed on your platform. Like if it's Facebook or something, you don't wanna have any kind of nudity or violence or blood or awful stuff on it. Um, yeah. Output. You also want to have the model version. So of what, whatever edition of the model that you've trained, let's say it's number 47. I feel like it'd probably be a more sophisticated uh, versioning system than that. Whatever, 47 though for now. Uh, I think you might want to have like a timestamp on it. That just seems like it could provide some valuable information. There you go. Yeah. Okay, and then, um, so how would this work? Uh, so you could, um, this can be extended for multiple tags um, or, so like, it'd be hard to create a generalized thing that handles all the different reasons why it might be harmful. And so it's easier to um, have like, separate model for each reason why. And so you have one specific model that handles nudity being in there, another one that specifically handles violence being in a harmful image, another one that detects drugs. If you have multiple, you can return a list of the outputs and then you would just have uh, concurrently run, you'd have this. It could have, um, it could have like multiple workers that it reaches out to and each one is running. Uh, a data model, and then it, they each return the results, store them, you have like a list of outputs and it returns that list of outputs as well. Um, so uh, let's spell this out a little bit more. There we go. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. This looked a little bit, so I, I mean, I'm sure they're gonna go on about convolutional neural networks a ton. They should, I expect them to. It'd be wild if they didn't, because it's a whole book about machine learning, um, even though it's context of system design. Um, yeah, I'm happy with this. So I guess we could cut it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.